Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our refuge and our strength, you raised up your servant, Martin Luther, to reform and renew your church in the light of your word. Defend and purify the church in our own day, and grant that through faith we may boldly proclaim the riches of your grace, which you have made known in Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, growing seed, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in, thing, in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is the 46th psalm, which is found on page 649 of the Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the, fine, the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of Martin Luther. Sometimes seems um, surprising to Episcopalians to, to celebrate Martin Luther, but there we, have, we are, have, owe a great debt uh, to Martin Luther for uh, his role in the Reformation, which brought us the Anglican tradition. Um, you could seriously question whether or not there would be, uh, would have been an English Reformation without the European Reformation of which um, Martin Luther was such an important part and an important voice. And Luther's own theology is such an important part of the theology that was incorporated into the uh, Anglican tradition. Not least, of course, because Luther didn't himself try to leave the, the church. He didn't try to leave Rome behind. He tried to get Rome to follow the path of reformation, of self-reformation. And he hoped that Rome would, uh, would be reformed, which, of course, in some ways it was. Um, but the Reformation required, the real Reformation required churches like the Church of England to break away from Rome. It's surprising to me that we're not given any reading today from St. Paul's writing, which so, animated, uh, which so animated Luther's own theology, that we're not reminded of the Pauline teaching that it is by, by grace through faith that we are saved and not by any works that we can accomplish on our own. So central was this teaching uh, to, to Luther and to the reformers since the Roman Catholic Church had tended to uh, err significantly in the direction of um, suggesting that by our that our works could make a big difference in our salvation. How um, unsettling it is to arrive at the first full day of, well, the second full day of Lent, I guess, when at least I've spent part of my last 24 hours thinking about what it is I have to do during Lent, what work it is that I have to do during Lent to land by, sort of by accident on the Feast of Martin Luther and be reminded, if we stop long enough to think about it, that it's not by our works that we'll be saved and that God doesn't ask us to do anything for our salvation, which is not the same thing as saying that God doesn't ask us to do anything. God asks us to do something, but the way that God asks us to do something is the same way that God ensures our Salvation, that is, by giving us the gifts of grace. It's part of the key to understanding, I think, Jesus' teaching that we hear in the 15th chapter of John's Gospel when Jesus says, as he does elsewhere, if you ask for anything in my name, you'll get it. We heard him say that. 
If you ask for anything, in my name, it'll be done for you. Uh, we, we hear this elsewhere in the Gospels as, as well. Remember, ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. Um, and yet we say to ourselves, well, wait a minute. This doesn't seem right. I asked for a pony and I still don't have a pony. Well, of course, the part of the equation that's missing, that's not missing from John's Gospel, but it's missing in our understanding of it, is grace. First, first, receive the gifts of gift of God's grace. Open yourself to God's grace. Let God's grace go to work inside of you, and outside of you for that matter. Be available to God's grace. Be transformed and shaped by God's grace. Then ask for whatever you will, because shaped by God's grace, whatever you ask for will be pleasing to God will be in line with what God wants for you and for me and for the world outside. But first, first, be formed, shaped, overtaken by God's grace. Let God's grace be at work in you. One of the principles of the Christian theology that we don't often hear about, but which I'm sure Martin Luther would have been happy to articulate himself I'm not sure he ever did it this way, but it undergirds much of his theology is this, that God always acts first. God always acts first. We, of course, forget this all the time because we generally think we are the center of the universe. And therefore, when we pray, we think we've started something. <laughs> when we pray, we have fallen into something that God started or stepped into something or danced into something or sung our way into something or embraced something that God started. God acts first and we respond. God acts first, why? How? By giving us grace, by giving us grace. As the rain and the snow fall from the heavens and return out again until they've watered the earth so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, God says. God acts first. He sends the rain and the snow of grace into our lives, just like today. The four of us and Daniel were outside shoveling today while it was still snowing. And guess what? The path that we shoveled is already covered again by snow. That's grace. Not the snow. That's the way grace works in our lives. You think it's depleted and there's more. You think you've ruined it and there's more. You think you don't deserve it and there's more. You think there wasn't enough for you in the first place? There's more. You're not sure where it's coming from or why? There's more. No one predicted it? There's more. You thought it was supposed to end? There's more. There's more grace for you and for me. God is always acting first in our lives, inviting us to respond by prayer, with action, in love, and through asking those for those things which by grace we know we need and the world needs to. Let God act in your life. He's already been acting in your life. It's been snowing grace in your life all your life, life long. Maybe you've known it, maybe you haven't. Maybe you thought that some of it was cleared away. There's more. It's still coming. God's gift of grace is available for you, not because you've done anything right or because you deserve it, but because God loves you and he will not stop giving you his grace. That's what Martin Luther dedicated his life and his work to teaching the church through all kinds of much more sophisticated means than I have at my disposal. For instance, by making the scriptures available to 
German-speaking peoples in their own tongue, which he did, and which, of course, inspired other reformers to make the Bible available to English. Well, some of them had already begun the Bible available in English. It would take another 60 years before the King James Bible would appear uh, in the church after, after Luther's death. What gifts he gave us by focusing our minds and our attention and our hearts on the grace of God. May Christ open our hearts to receive that grace, to know that it is by that grace and that grace alone that we are saved, and to make room in our hearts for that grace to fall. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world using form six of the prayers of the people found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer or on the Mass card. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who preach the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop. For Daniel, our bishop, for Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who are God and the Son. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially the sick of this parish and those who are in need, particularly remembering to pray for Chris, George, Sue, Kent John, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Jean, John, Marguerite, Kathleen, Russell, Vicki, Lori, Bob, John, Elizabeth, Perry, Marilyn, and all those who remember in the silence of our hearts. Continuing also to pray for all those who are sick with the coronavirus, for all doctors, nurses, medical workers, and other essential workers of various occupations who put themselves at risk for the well-being of others, for those who are unemployed or otherwise in financial straits, and are worried about their livelihoods, their careers, their families, and their own well-being. For all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling for justice that's been denied, or working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society. For peace throughout the world and for an end to warfare, violence, oppression, and the threat of terrorism. For refugees who are in search of a homeland. For those who live in great poverty in so many places around the world, especially all those who are living in poverty in this city who are our neighbors, for those who are imperiled because of the snow and the cold weather in this city and around this nation, for all those who are homeless, hungry, lost, frightened, alone, who are in prison, who are struggling with addiction, suffering with mental illness, or otherwise in any danger, and for all those who suffer in any way, in body, mind, or estate. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life, giving thanks especially for the beauty of this day, giving thanks for the ministry residents and their hard work, giving thanks for all those who offer their ministries and outreach ministries in this parish, for those who are volunteering in outreach ministries at St. Simon's, at the Church of the Crucifixion, at St. James, and at the Welcome Table, and all those who extend themselves to provide aid and assistance to those who are in trouble or in need. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. 
We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially all those who've died from the coronavirus in the past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days, and those who have died because of the frigid weather. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord perceive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Mark the Evangelist, with blessed Martin Luther, and with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 